In this video, we're gonna go through a collection that I just picked up and paid $40,000 for. Stay tuned. Bry's Comics. Welcome to Bry's Comics. This channel is all about comic book investment and speculation with tips on how to have this hobby fund itself. If that's something that interests you, grab that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, like this video, comment down below, and it will enter you to win this month's giveaway for the YouTube channel, which is this slab. And head over to Bry'sComics.com and sign up for the newsletter uh, for your chance to win a free slab each and every month. And this month, it is this slab. As you can see, I haven't done my giveaway stuff yet for the month, but we did just pass a new month so we have a winner uh, this month's youtube winner for march for the first appearance of beta ray bill is this person and this month's winner for the first appearance of jubilee from the newsletter at bricecomics.com is this person congratulations to you and good luck on this next month i want to go over this collection i want to go over the history the story of the collection how much i paid why i paid what i did and all of that i think that's the most valuable part about videos like this is just getting a better understanding of what happens when you go to sell a collection. So this collection came through the website and the YouTube channel, obviously the, the subscriber that saw that I, I buy collections and he reached out and he said, Hey, you know, I'm thinking about selling. Um, this is what I have and this is what uh, I would like to get. And so he sent me a link and this collection was actually completely categorized on comicspriceguide.com. Um, and comicspriceguide.com had the value at somewhere around $100,000. This is my first time with that website. Did not care for this website. It's clunky. It's not user-friendly. It's not easy to use. The values aren't correct. There's nothing good about this website. Don't recommend it. But so I went through the collection and just started to value it because, you know, he, he said that he wanted $60,000. The website had it valued at around $100,000. And that is about what I pay. I pay 60% of FMV for massive collections. Okay, if it's a massive collection, I can pay about 60% of FMV. If it's a smaller collection, like just a few boxes of graded keys, I can pay 70% of FMV. And I think that that is a really valuable resource for the community. It's something that I pride myself in and to be able to offer a resource like that to the community because as far as I'm aware, there is no other resource like that. If you want to go and sell your massive collection that you've spent sometimes a lifetime, certainly decades collecting all these books, if you want to move it all in one fell swoop, the best I've seen out there is somewhere between 25 and 50%. I've never seen anything over 50%. And so I think it's a really valuable resource for the community that when you decide to leave the hobby or if you have something come up in your life where you need the funds right away, where you can liquidate your comics without getting completely screwed. And one thing about collecting, one thing that's an issue when, you do, when it does come time to sell is the liquidity. The liquidity factor for comics is an issue just because you have a collection that valued by some website at $100,000, that does not mean that you can liquidate it instantly for $100,000. Unless you have good relationships within the community, then you can find ways to move books a lot faster, including big books, which is why it's so important to have an established following, friends in the community, get an IG account for comics, and make these connections because when it does come time to move your books, you'll have better options of how to do it. And so this collector in particular decided that it was just time to move on from the hobby. And, you know, it's totally understandable. It happens from time to time. A lot of times with my personal collection, what I'll do is I'll go through phases. Like I'll collect, I'll go from collecting everything to collecting just a certain set of things, then decide that I want to collect something completely different. So my personal collection has gone through total liquidations several times. And this may not be the end for this collector. You know, he might get back into collecting and have a different strategy the next time. So it's really cool when you can get to this point of complete liquidation where you can not get completely screwed for the price and if you can end your collection your collecting of decades on a note where you sold it to somebody for a fair price where you actually came out on top it just is a better feeling you can move on from it knowing that you know, it had a good ending rather than just letting it go for pennies on the dollar. And so don't feel bad for this guy. A lot of these books, like the, the most expensive book in the collection, uh, Marvel Super Special 16, um, he bought at a shop for 50 bucks and he had it graded. It came back in 98. It's like a three or $4,000 book. So he's doing really well for himself, but there is an emotional attachment to this. I mean, this is a hobby because we're passionate about it. And um, this collection, it really, 
really showed this collector's passion for the hobby. Everything is immaculately kept. Every single raw book is taped and organized and categorized. The slabs were treated well. I've, I've seen some collections that have just been through the ringer, rode hard and hung up wet. And this one is not like that, which makes processing it a complete joy um, and a lot of fun. I, I had a lot of fun uh, meeting the collector. If he lived closer, I'm sure we'd be friends, but he lives halfway across the country. And so, you know, I, that's another reason why I think that I offer really competitive races. I've only been doing this a little time. And this is the third time that somebody has driven halfway across the country to sell me their comics, because even with the ad cost of driving halfway across the country this this person rented a van drove halfway across the country with today's gas prices bought a plane ticket home and even after that had more money in his pocket than any of his local options it wasn't without trying this took like six months to come to fruition he tried to sell it somewhere closer to him and i don't blame him he didn't want to drive across the country but at the end of the day it was the the, the most bang for his bucks so i forgot to mention that uh one of the books were a really really big book that was on the website that got that value up to $100,000 wasn't included. So some of the books didn't actually make it to me. So if you're wondering like how is $40,000, 60% of $100,000, um, some of the books weren't included. So I just thought I'd mention that. So I'm pretty confident that $40,000 was about 60% of FMV. And if it wasn't, right, if I go through this and find out that there is way more in here than I originally thought, after I screen everything and press everything and send it off to grading, you know, I very well could reach back out to this seller because now I consider him a friend and say, hey, I think I underpaid you. I've done this b before with collections I have bought. I said, hey, I underpaid you, here's some more money. So it's gonna take a while to see that though because it's thousands of books to get through, hundreds of those that need to be screened, cleaned, pressed, submitted to CGC. It's going to be six to eight months before they come back, um, you know, and not knowing which ones of those are going to actually hit the 9.8 because a lot of them are modern books that really need to be pre-screened for 9.8. So, you know, it's very difficult to, to put a, a value on it and it's going to take a ton of time to actually figure out what the value is because of all of those processes involved, all those steps, everything along the way takes time time takes money i have you know a full-time employee now all of this overhead that i didn't have before um which does two things one it helps me process things faster okay if i didn't it, having the overhead is totally worth it if it wasn't i wouldn't do it if if it was more profitable for me to do this alone on the weekends and have another job i'd do that but it is way more profitable to have a functioning business with a bunch of overhead it's like a well-oiled machine now with this full-time employee and and getting everything and we're still growing. Uh, so what that does is it allows me to process things quicker. So my money is tied up for less time. I'm able to pay more money to the seller and sell the books for less money to the buyer, right? That's one of the things that I love about this hobby is no one has to get screwed. There's so much opportunity everywhere. And if you do it right, everybody comes out on top, right? All right, so here we go with all of the main um, slabbed keys. Um, and starting with the modern books. So we have Carnage USA number one, the second print in a 9.8. This was on the Hot 10 Runners Up. Um, just a, a hard book to find. Amazing Spider-Man Renew Your Vows number one from the first series. This is the one in 50 Campbell variant cover and it's the first appearance of Annie Parker who later becomes Spiderling and just an awesome J. Scott Campbell cover. Amazing Spider-Man number four. This is the one in 10 Ramos variant cover. Um, and this is the issue where Cindy Moon becomes Silk. And then we also have Amazing Spider-Man number four, the cover A. Edge of Spider-Verse number five. This is the one in 25 Greg Land cover. And this is the first appearance of Penny Parker and also the first appearance of Ezekiel as Old Man Spider and the debut of writer Gerard Way at Marvel. Batman Beyond, number one, the first comic book appearance of Terry McGinnis. And this is the newsstand edition in 8.5 white pages. Venom 23, the variant edition. Um, this is just a super rare Del Mundo cover, just really hard to find. And um, another one, Venom 22, also just a super hard to find uh, Del Mundo incentive cover. Venom number three, the first full appearance of Null, and this is the one in 25 variant. Um, so this will just go in my growing horde of Null books. Uh, just not gonna sell 
Noel right now. I think Noel is a fantastic spec, and anytime they come into collection, I just I just put them in a box. I just can't bring myself to sell any Noel um, keys right now. Um, and here's cover A of Venom number three, and another book that I have a hoard of that I'm not selling. It just keeps growing. Venom number nine, the first full appearance of Dylan Brock, who, as we know later, becomes Venom. Here's Venom number seven, cover A. There's also a um, secret variant for this where there's a tongue sticking out, and this is the uh, first cameo appearance of Dylan Brock. There's another copy of his first full. Spawn 199 in a 9.8, just a low print run spawn. I, it's so funny that I got this book back. I, I sold this book, and I, it's the second time I've ever even seen it. Um, it's the Spawn Thanks, no number, and it's an ASM 300 homage. Um, and this was just kind of like a, a bonus book that was distributed to comic book shops. Something is Killing the Children, number one. First appearance of Erica Slaughter, the Jenny Friesen cover, and the Jay Lee cover, and the cover A. So this one will stay in my growing hoard of Something is Killing the Children, number one. I'm definitely not selling any of the cover A's right now. This book just has too much potential. The series just has too much potential. Army of Darkness number one. This is the movie adaptation um, in comic book form. I just thought it was really cool. It's a 9-9. It's not like a, a monster book, but you know, not every day you see a 9-9. Now some Star Wars books. Darth Vader number three. Uh, this must be the second series for Darth Vader. It's not the first appearance of Dr. Aphra. It's the first full appearance of Karak in Phila. And this is the second print. Darth Maul number two in a 9-6. First Cad Bane. What do you guys think? Leave it out in the comments. Is he dead or is he coming back? Two copies in a 9.6. This is a tough book to get in 9-8. And this is just a cool Star Wars book. It's Star Wars number six. I don't think it's a key, but it's signed. Um, and it says, I've got a bad feeling about this and signed by John Cassidy and signed by Laura Martin and Jason Aaron as well. So it's got three cool signatures and a cool little quote on there. Just, a, just an awesome Star Wars book. Star Wars Dawn of the Jedi number zero. This is a nine six. And then we have Star Wars Dawn of the Jedi number one. And this is the origin of the, of the Jedi. This image was featured, I believe it was a Disney Plus investor day or something in the background. So it's kind of like a maybe an Easter egg that we're gonna see them in the Star Wars uh, Disney Plus. Deadpool Secret Wars number two. This is the Gwen Stacy variant cover. This is a 1 in 25 and it's the first cover appearance of Gwenpool which predates her first full appearance in Howard the Duck number one. Invincible number five. The first appearance of Alan the Alien in a 9-8. Kanan the Last Padawan number six. This is the first cameo appearance of Sabine Wren. The first uh, cameo appearance of Ezra Bridger and the first cameo appearance of Hera Sindula and the first appearance of Kanan Jarrus. So we got two copies of that. And Spider-Man number 12. This is the Isanova variant cover. Uh, the first kiss between Miles Morales and Gwen Stacy. And what a difficult book to get in high grade. I mean, you can see it's just all black cover, basically, especially on the spine. Just a super hard book to get. In high grade, a stunning cover to boot. Continuing with the moderns, we have Invincible Iron Man number nine, the first full appearance of Riri Williams. And we also have Invincible Iron Man number seven, the first uh, cameo appearance of Riri Williams, and also the first full appearance of Tomo. And this is the Women of Power variant. So here we have the same book, um, first print, cover A, second print, and the third print. And this third print ties for the first cover appearance of Riri Williams, um, but it was featured on three books that were released simultaneously. Strange Academy number one, the first appearance of so many characters and this beautiful wraparound cover by Humberto Ramos, which is an awesome variant cover. Bloodstone number one, the first appearance of Elsa Bloodstone. I think this book is uh, destined for a cover homage. I just love this cover. Captain Marvel number 14, the first appearance of Kamala Khan in Cameo. And all new Marvel Now point one, number one, the first full appearance of the new Miss Marvel in Kamala Khan. Miss Marvel number one, this is the sixth print. And it's also the first appearance of Zoe Zimmer, who's confirmed for the show. This is an awesome book, Mighty Thor number 705. It's a, just a really awesome uh, Ji Hong Lee variant cover, and it's also the death of Jane Foster, and it's signed by Stan Lee and Jason Aaron. 
So just a really cool book right there. Point one, number one, uh, first full appearance of Sam Alexander as the new Nova. And this is the Bradshaw wraparound cover, which in my opinion is a better cover than cover A. Um, it's just epic with all of our heroes there on the cover. Teen Titans number 12. This is the second print, first full appearance of the Batman Who Laughs. And also the first print cover A for the first appearance of the Batman Who Laughs. Amazing Spider-Man 569. This is the first appearance of Anti-Venom. And this is the second print. Super hard to find book in a 9-6. And the cover A. Oh shit. This is a newsstand edition. I just noticed that. I didn't notice that before, but um, this is the newsstand edition for uh, the first appearance of Anti-Venom in a 9.6. So you see right there in the barcode, it says Amazing Spider-Man. The direct edition says direct edition right there. And up there on the label, it says 399 newsstand edition. So this one actually does have a different price, which is why they put it on the label. So usually CGC will only put newsstand edition on the label if it's a different price. Now we're getting into some bronze and copper stuff. We've got uh, X-Men 211, the first full appearance of the Marauders in a PGX 9.8 and X-Men 222, Sabretooth appearance, um, just another awesome cover for X-Men and PGX, 9.8. Wolverine, number one, the first appearance of Wolverine as Patch, um, and an awesome back cover pinup, one of the best parts of this book. Here's one of the bigger books in the collection, uh, Incredible Hulk, number 180. It says, the first appearance of Wolverine in Cameo, Wolverine, also referred to as Weapon X, and Wendigo cover and appearance. Also signed by Stan Lee, 7.5, witnessed signature. So as you can see, it says witness signature instead of verified signature. It does make a difference, um, at least to me, on these CBCS books. I think a witness signature should be valued a little bit more than a verified signature. Um, but just an awesome book that will make a great addition to anyone's collection. World's Finest Comics, number 153 in a CGC 8.0 off-white pages. This is that infamous issue where Batman is bitch-slapping Robin. That's the source of so many memes, especially right now with everything going on with Will Smith. This is an 8.0, but it looks really, really nice. I'm going to have to pull the grader's notes and see what's going on with this book to hold it back. It's a potential crack candidate because this is definitely a hard book to find in, in high grade. So here we're getting into a little bit of Silver Age, not a ton of Silver Age uh, in this collection, but we have Daredevil number six, the origin and first appearance of Mr. Fear. Iron Man and Submariner number one in the 8.5 white pages just looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, this book predates both Iron Man number one and Submariner number one. It's just an awesome Silver Age book and it's just looks like it just rolled off the press just white pages super clean book right there fantastic 467 in a 50 with white pages um, origin and first appearance of him batman 181 in a 4.0 the first appearance of poison ivy um, with that infamously hard to find pinup on the interior pages that was just irresistible to cut out so harder to find this book in a blue label awesome in any grade really now we're getting back into some bronze and copper we've got uh daredevil 168 the origin first appearance of electra nova number one in the 94 white pages origin first appearance of nova and richard Ryder, and the first appearance of ginger j amazing spider-man 121 in 80 with white pages the death of Gwen Stacy, that iconic issue. ASM 298 and a 9.6 newsstand edition, the first Todd McFarlane on Spider-Man and the first appearance of Eddie Brock in Cameo. And then 299 and a 9.6. And to round out that set, ASM 300 and 9.6 white pages, origin and first full appearance of Venom. This book looks, looks really nice. There's no spine ticks. One of the hardest things on this book because of the black cover on the front and the back is spine ticks. And there's no noticeable color breaking spine ticks on this one. So I'm gonna have to pull the notes and see what's going on with that book. Amazing Spider-Man 361 newsstand edition, first full appearance of Carnage. Uncanny X-Men 266, the first full appearance of Gambit. Debatable, but that's what it says on the label. And a 
X-Men 221, the first appearance of Mr. Sinister, and a Marauder's appearance, 9.8 white pages. Uncanny X-Men 164, Carol Danvers becomes binary in a 9.8 white pages. Now we have some TMNT stuff, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number 7, wraparound cover. I like these TMNT books because they're regular comic size. Um, I've always kind of hesitated to collect TMNT because of the magazine cases, which just absolutely suck. But um, So it's always cool to find them in regular comic size. And then we also have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number 1. The fourth print, which is a wraparound in 9.6 white pages. Awesome cover there. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number two. This is the third print, first appearance of the Mausers, and just an awesome wraparound cover. And again, regular comic book size. Um, and there's a really cool cover there with uh, April on the cover. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Adventures number one. This is the third print in 9.8 white pages. G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero, number one, based on the Hasbro toy line, CGC 9.8, white pages, direct, awesome book, it's been on a tear recently, and then a whole bunch of copies of the Saga of the Swamp Thing, number 37, the first full appearance of John Constantine, and a lot of these look really nice, I'm going to have to pull the notes and see what's going on with these, especially the 9.6s, but there's two 8.5 white pages, a 9.0, and two 9.6 white pages. So they're all white pages, which, you know, to me, kind of says that they were stored properly and cared for. So these books definitely have potential for crack press. We'll have to see what the notes say. So this is probably the biggest book in the whole collection. It's Marvel Super Special number 16 and a 9.8 with white pages. Last I checked, there's only 16 of these uh, in 9.8 on the census. It's an adaptation of Star Wars Empire Strikes Back in an oversized comic book magazine. It's the first appearance of Yoda, first appearance of Boba Fett, first appearance of Lando Cal Calrissian, first appearance of Emperor Palpatine, a.k.a. Darth Sidious, Bosk, Forlom, Dengar, and IG-88, the drones, and the first team appearance of Rogue Squadron. So this predates all of the comic book issues for Star Wars that feature those first appearances. I've talked about this in previous videos, but um, so every first appearance from, I believe it's Star Wars 40 through 46, every first appearance in those comic books happens in this magazine first. So I think this is an undervalued book still, even at today's prices, especially now with uh, the show Boba Fett not being as well received um, and there's still potential for this book. I mean, with Lando and his series that's coming and all those other first appearances, so a lot of potential for this book to see bumps. And luckily, this case is in perfect condition. A lot of times, these CGC magazine cases have tons of problems, but this is actually the nicest one I've ever seen. So I'm, I, was, I was really worried about that, and I'm super stoked that it's actually in really good shape. All right, so here is the rest of the slabs from the collection. There was about 250 or so slabs in the collection, and these were just ones I thought, you know, I'm not gonna pull out every single one and just go over the, the main keys that we just went over earlier. But as you can see, I mean, they're, they're, some of them are, are lower value, but some of them are still great keys, maybe just lower grade, like here's the first appearance of Kitty Pride in the Edo. Here's the first full appearance of Alpha Flight. Here's the first cameo of Alpha Flight. Um, bunch of X-Men keys. First Riri in a 9.6. Um, so still some really awesome stuff in here. Um, I just didn't want to pull out all 250 and go through every single one. And this is the Raw Books. So the Raw Books are just a completely different story. It's just so difficult to get a collection of this size and to figure out exactly what's in it how much it's worth but just to give you an idea i just did this just now so i've processed four of the boxes so far and pulled out um the ones that i think are grade worthy but just to give you an idea of what's in here i just pulled out these two just now and looked at them for the first time um and pulled out these three books right here we have fantastic four uh, ultimate fantastic four 22 first uh cameo and first full appearance of the Marvel Zombies and the first cover appearance of the Marvel Zombies. So for Ultimate Fantastic Four, um, you know, he had, uh, and then this one, which I'm not sure is a key. So only a, like a handful of the Ultimate Fantastic Fours in the collection. It's not the entire run. So the last collection I bought, you know, the guy read the series. And so he had Ultimate Fantastic Four, one through 50. 
because um, he was a reader, and it seems like this person's collection was more about collecting just the keys. Um, like keys and cool covers, that type of thing. And so yeah, that's just the start, the tip of the iceberg for these raw books. Uh, stay tuned for a future video. I'll do another video about the rest of the raw books, probably go through all of them and just have the stuff that I think's worthy and ready to submit to CGC. I think that'd be a cool video to see exactly what gold actually pull out of this. And then of course, when it all comes back from CGC uh, in six to eight months or so, um, we'll see what actually hit the 9.8. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, comment on this video, and like this video for your chance to win this slab and sign up for the newsletter at BryceComics.com and you're entered to win a free slab each and every month. As always, thank you for sticking with me to the end of the video and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Bryce Comics.